Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of Thrust Talks. I am Shambhavi Kulkarni from SEMAC and I will interview our today's speaker along with Aniket Tatar from SECOM. Our today's speaker is the founder and CEO of Dormonk, Mr. Ashutosh Kumar. So Mr. Ashutosh, I welcome you to this session and thank you for coming. So first of all, I would like you to introduce yourself so that our audience knows about you. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, basically, uh, I started Domonk uh, two years back. It was July 2018 that we got formally incorporated. So just to introduce myself, uh, uh, I am not coming from any B-school, though I don't know what kind of expectation you guys have. Uh, but uh, I am a kind of entrepreneur who um, like, you know, faced some problem in my own life and, uh, and was an ambitious uh, kind of person. So I uh, thought of launching something on my own. So prior to that, uh, coming to the educational background, I, have, I had completed engineering uh, from University of Pune and then had all the plan to do the uh, master's and PhD into physics because I keen, was keenly interested and had a very colossal interest in physics. Uh, so joined uh, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research for uh, like you know, as a kind of internship and had all the, was planning to get into physics. Somehow or the other, I was not enjoying or I, I realized that no, this is not what I actually want to do. So <laughs> didn't go for it. And then uh, like you know that there was one personal incident which happened in my life, and that was like uh, my father. Uh, he had a kind of uh, small uh, stroke, you can say that one night he reported uh, that he's having a chest pain and we took him to the hospital. And then when we went to the hospital uh, in the morning, the cardiac, the doctor, he told me that uh, it was a minor attack. So I was a little surprised uh, because he's a guy. I know that from childhood, I've seen him very disciplined, having very good lifestyle. And uh, then we, uh, when we examined the scenario of the hospital and the, in particular the hospital food, uh, we found that hospital food was actually not that great. And that's where this idea came in. The Domong came and uh, my startup journey uh, began and with my other co-founders, yeah. Okay, so that was great to know about uh, you and how the idea of Domong came in your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me proceed with the next question. It's sure. what all services that Domong offers? Wonderful. So, uh, Domonk, we actually started with an idea. Uh, I'll tell you, let me give you some background, uh, not just about Domonk, but about in general, about entrepreneurship and startup. Uh, how does the startup functions or how does an entrepreneur or at least particularly me and my co-founder, how we have evolved. Uh, so, we had started with an idea, uh, which was uh, like, you know, meant for so, uh, like, you know, serving the food or the good food in the college hostels or giving them the, because I was staying in hostel and I had this pain, uh, not uh, getting the good food, you know, being uh, during my JA preparation time, I had this problem. And then when I came to college, uh, again, there, uh, like, you know, the mess food was perpetually very bad. So we thought, yeah. okay, uh, this problem, and, and we wanted to do a start. So now you see, there are two things matching here. One is that you have a pain you are experiencing in daily life, and then you will want to do something in your life so yeah. and then then when these two coincides or coincides then you think of okay i have got a billion dollar idea <laughs> and that's where uh, like you know uh, we thought of uh, like you know this uh, idea of be uh, germinated uh, but uh, coming to domong so we started in domong with uh, giving the food which is good for the students or for the hostels to hostel mm -hmm. students in particular uh, but uh, that time, I honestly to tell you, like we were a naive entrepreneur. We had no idea what entrepreneurship is, what customer research is, what is product market fit. So these kind of the mm -hmm. words or the jargon we were hearing for the first time. Uh, like when we went to the investor, they asked, okay, what's your ACV, annual contract value? And we had, oh, mm -hmm. something that we should be aware of. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, you know, so in course of time, there were multiple pivots that we had to do. And let me uh, uh, admit it on it on the public forum and uh, that uh, like you know we had to do a lot of pivots so we started with that uh, like you know giving a traditional dabba wala kind of scheme um, and then when we pivoted to the institutional level and when we went to the institutional uh, service like the b2b uh, company 
then mm-hmm. uh, we uh, like you know uh, and in particular when we as i told you one of the incident happened in my own life about my yeah. father and then by then we were learning so uh, we were meeting multiple entrepreneurs and that's where uh, then we came up this idea that for us so currently now coming to your question that what do we do <clears throat> so uh, we have two companies basically one is dorma okay uh that's the uh, that is in corporate india called domong services tech private limited okay and there is another company or you can say that's an another separate entity uh which we are like you know incorporating uh and that is in outside india and in particular it's in canada so that's a company we are uh, like you know registering and uh, this two company uh, so i am the founder of uh, domong and uh, naturally i was the ceo for this uh, until this but uh, Uh, now uh, the board and we all are deciding that there will be another founder uh, sorry not the founder but the ceo mm-hmm. will be taking care of the indian operation for this uh, domong and this company would be different so the domong in particular gives the food or you can say uh, like you know we wish to cover the entire ecosystem for the food for the institutes and when i say institutes i do not mean the uh, colleges but to the hospitals so the domong idea is to mm-hmm. so the good food for the all the stakeholders maybe doctors maybe patients or maybe uh, like you know uh, walk in visitors or anyone so that's where but the idea of the like you know what the real idea of behind our company is is actually we felt a problem that there are food vendors there are millions of food vendors actually uh, like you know just to, to give you the data in india there are more than 1 million food vendors who serves to the hospital and still when we did our customer research we found that hospital has hard time in finding curated food vendors so we came up with a platform and it is not yet public so uh, like you know very soon will it will be live and that platform connects food vendors to the hospitals mm-hmm. so hospitals have this uh, like it comes to our portal and uh, connects with the right food vendors based on the uh, whatever their requirement so that's the one thing in second part of our solution what we do we help the food vendor to perform up to the mark for the hospital so it's a uh, like you know a machine learning based uh, algorithm which uh, scans the, like I, i'll tell you one uh, real time scenario uh, that we all have this experience in uh, going to hospitals as a patient so tell me one thing uh, whenever you went to any hospital and uh, uh, i'm sure that <laughs> we all have so yeah. and you wish to know that the food what you had today in the morning let us say tomato soup you had uh, somewhere uh, like uh, as a recommendation from the dietitian and you wish to know that the quality of the tomato which were used in the today's tomato soup were really great or really up to the mark uh, mm. do you have that choice well no not right now exactly so and it this is not the problem in india don't consider that india is a like you know we are still developing so we do not have this right not just in india but anywhere across the globe this is not being done even till today so we understood oh there is a problem so uh, like you know what our system does i'll tell you this is just one feature and what it does that as soon as there is a batch cooking so in our uh, uh, application uh, there is camera integrated like what you see in whatsapp and uh, it gets activated based on the lat long in latitude and the longitude of Uh, that kitchen so that they, uh, that is for the security purpose so that the vendor is not taking any other picture and misusing it or older picture he is not using yeah. and it gets activated exactly on the time when there is order placed so uh, as soon as the order comes uh, this vendor she takes the picture and the hospitals have the da- dashboard where they can see what is the freshness of the quality or the raw ingredient which was used in cooking today mm-hmm. so Uh, so this is a uh, kind of feature uh, that uh, that uh, that we are developing uh, th- that is uh, like you know uh, we are offering now to hospitals so yeah mm-hmm. that's a really great feature and i think after this pandemic everyone will start relying on hospital food like even if <laughs> sometime someone has to have food in the hospitals they won't be worrying that what kind of food will i get about yeah. the quality so this is a really great feature that you are coming up with thank you okay so moving to our next question 
uh, we would like uh, to know about your college life like your lectures and all the fun that you had oh uh, so uh, that, that's a question that i always like you know really struggle to answer all the time <laughs> so because uh, okay. during college days i was a kind of shy guy <laughs> i had a very less friend or uh, very limited friends I means i mean there were so many great people around me um, but unfortunately i was uh, not that kind of guy who is very extrovert or very expressive in that sense and uh, going to but uh, though i like you know even after all this i Uh, really admit that all my friends were really supportive and really good guys even if i was introvert they used to pull me and <laughs> so i had a very uh, great college life uh, i believe like you know m- many of my friends uh, like there were three places that i have spent most of my time during my four year of college uh, is mm-hmm. one is uh, the laboratory uh, because of the projects and other thing whenever we are involved another was the library and the third thing was the classroom these are the only three things which is the most boring place in the uh, most of my time has been spent so so yeah so college life was really fantastic uh, mm-hmm. i really enjoyed sometimes i do feel uh, like you know that we are miss uh, like sometimes if there is a opportunity uh, definitely that uh, the college life is always great and nostalgic for everyone so the same for me too i'm not the ex- exception <laughs> Okay, so when you a bad venture, you were that kind of sincere student <laughs> who used to sit on the bench and do everything on time. I guess this kind, this question, uh, answer for this question would be greatly given, or uh, like you know, I won't be able to justify because uh, I'm a student. Maybe the teachers can answer this question well. Uh, but uh, I mean, I used to be average kind of student. I was not uh, bad, bad. and but never was in the first rank <laughs> so okay. i mean i always used to feel like you know why uh, will i ever get the first uh, position in my class but it never happened i never could get that uh-huh. yeah okay but you are the first one to bring this new future uh, feature oh yeah we are trying uh, i mean uh, that's what entrepreneurship is all about uh, like uh, if you see Uh, most of the entrepreneurs who have came from our country or from anywhere uh, in the globe if you see their life so they always wanted to do something which is immaterial uh, which is going to uh, contribute greatly to society and it is not just for the sake of their own uh, like you know just living or trying to be or coming forth 30 under 30 or on the time magazines or cover picture and some so this is all great uh, that is all yes. the uh, like you know side product you can say the by product that will mm-hmm. naturally come to you if uh, uh, you are in the list or if you are in the race but mm-hmm. the point is that there is something uh, that moves you forward all the time uh, even in the situation when everybody yeah. is saying that oh follow this trend or do this or that like that so yeah, yeah. i mean i am not the one who is bringing any such kind of thing i believe that um, i with my entire team uh, we really work very hard to Uh, like you know even for a smaller things we really uh, do a lot of research we reach to our customers and that's the reason even today in india i'll tell you uh, we have been doing the business in india for approximately 15 months now and in just 15 months of time even there was six months of pandemic if you remove it and if you consider uh, just nine months of our operation in that way and for six months was another uh, like you know the pre vote and the something that you are still learning so that way effectively we have uh we had our business of uh, uh, not more than 4 or 5 months and in 4 or 5 months of business that uh, like you know we started from zero and grew up to the revenue of approximately 500000 uh, uh, dollar so that's approximately 3 okay. to 4 crore indian rupees so i am proud yeah. to say that it's all because of my team that we could achieve and uh, yeah so it's the team effort at the end actually right right Okay, so let's move on to yeah. our next question. So why yeah. did you choose food tech and not anything else? Now, oh. yeah. So basically, um, as I told you, that there was an incident, and uh, uh, we wanted to, and when we experienced that pain, so it started from a personal uh, pain, 
and then we started going for doing customer research understanding the market and all such things uh, so it started from uh, i would say the pain point uh, so and that was related to food and since we were coming from a background uh, where you already have an interest or you have an edge over technology so you wish and see ultimately if you do not have the technology in place uh, then it's very very hard to scale the business and it's not just about scale yeah. when you want to do some business you definitely uh, want to scale into up to a level where you a mass can get benefited uh, not just to one city or one hospital or something like that uh, as i told you like you know in just our this small months of operations uh, in a very so- small, uh, small period of time uh, we have solved more than 600000 meals it's, it's uh, and uh, i'm sure that uh, before the like you know this financial era ends will be crossing 1 million meals or uh, 1.5 million meals so that I, i'm just telling you any figure not any our target but uh, so that's where the technology came so we coming from one personal experience of food uh, which was not good and then here is the technology so we thought okay now let's do a, a business who could be a like you know and solving it on a larger scale so we thought of okay let's do the food tech and it was making sense Uh, the market size was good there is a scale- scalability the pain is existing and uh, you have uh, as i told you a great market size here that uh, that re- and really fits in and nobody is doing that's another thing people are like you see uh, most of the startup uh, i personally like because we are from this industry we find like most of the startup they are all jumping into feed to see food market uh, like you know you uh, I, i not not to mention but uh, even if you see like you know Uh, though their business model is not exactly like us or nowhere coinciding or parallel to us but still just to uh, have a comparison you see uh, most uh, like in the companies like swiggy or zomato they are also the facilitator but they are somewhere in b2c uh, yeah and they can have some model where they can be b2b but in our case we thought okay why not to solve a food market uh, uh, like you know which can be so, uh, can be for the enterprise and that's where we came up a model a b2b to b saas product so uh, like you know and uh, that, that's where and and we found that in our initial days of uh, like you know pilot we found that it is working uh, yeah, yeah, we are able to change the revenue so it's a sustainable business so that made mm-hmm. sense and that's where we came into food tech <laughs> okay that was great to know uh, mm-hmm. so there were many challenges for businesses and startups during this pandemic period and so mm-hmm. your business also had faced some challenges so how did you cope up with the challenges that the pandemic brought oh yeah a uh, really good question and uh, one thing i would say um, uh, that in our case particularly we found that yes pandemic brought lot of problem uh, like in you know, a lot of challenges uh, but at the same time it brought lot of opportunity now okay. if you keep the same lens with is already uh, contaminated or dusted with a lot of uh, like you know uh, dust then you may not be able to see through clearly but if you have got a business acumen and if you are really willing to solve a problem you are uh, not just obsessed about your own idea but uh, you are objective you, you need to be obsessed it's uh, nothing wrong you need to be obsessed otherwise it's very hard to uh, uh, continue for longer period but you also need to be objective uh, that okay uh, that i might be wrong uh, so in our case we found uh, like you know because uh, one of the benefit we had that our 60% of the clients uh, were into medicine or the hospitals so in fact instead of going decaying it, it went uh, high so we had that benefit <laughs> in that sense uh, we were able to really uh, like you know uh, it was a kind of emergency situation and uh, uh, i like in you know, all thanks to my team that they were really able to reach or cater to that demand and uh, we were definitely be uh, was able to uh, like you know serve a longer or the larger segment of people than what we were doing previously but uh, uh, like you know i believe your question is most like okay uh, since you are coming from a hospital background so you have that uh, age or benefit but if you do not have that advantage if you are coming from a background uh, where uh, you may not be essentially into hospitals then what even in such case you see uh, i'll tell you in last uh, like you know 3 months if you check 
uh, though uh, the effectiveness of the funding which was going at the investors uh, where initially it was thought that may not be that great but if you see the data it's uh, like you know in last 3 months it is nowhere less it is exactly happening the same way so now the newer opportunity has come now it's up to us that uh, how do we figure out that opportunity and uh, and and how to leverage it so so the covid in my opinion should not be a speed breaker or it may be for some time because you were not aware of it and unprecedented but you should use it as a lever and and to grow yourself so so in our case we were like you know had a great advantage and also not just that we also uh, like uh, launched different products and which helped us yeah yeah it was great to know that covid actually benefited you uh, so raising mm-hmm. capital is one of the most challenging part for an entrepreneur and for a startup True. so can you narrate your experience about growth? yeah <laughs> yeah so raising capital is definitely a challenge uh, but uh, uh, not just i but most of the entrepreneurs if you see the uh, Uh, the experienced entrepreneur they would advise uh, rage mostly when you don't need it uh, if you are raging when you when your uh, legs are already water so the party uh, initially uh, we did not think of a rage uh, we thought of doing a great business we wanted to really solve a problem understand the business first so i with my co-founder uh, we were really struggling to get our first customer we never was after invest so first we went to uh, like you know uh, uh, getting for the customers and when we went to the customers uh, we uh, got our first client uh, like you know we started in july and to get our first client it took us 6 months so in the november first uh, like you know month of 2018 that was uh, the time when we we got our first client and since then we started moving on and there happened like you know we felt now there is a right need or we need uh, capital or external capital to scale our business and that's where i remember i launched my company in july 11 2018 and raised my first kind of angel invest- investment uh, from one of the gentlemen uh, in Uh, approximately april of 2019 so it's, it's approximately 11 months or 10 months of time that uh, we raised so yeah i believe that that was the angel then we when we went to for the institutional capital uh, that was in uh, 2019 of uh, december uh, and uh, like you know by then we were already doing a revenue of uh, like you know Uh, more than forty fifty fifty thousand uh, US dollar, so per month, and then when then uh, that is the time when we went for our institutional cap. So fundraising is definitely hard, uh, but uh, when you are just after doing it. But if you are uh, first, uh, I uh, my suggestion is, and most of the entrepreneurs they would say now it, in case to case it will vary. It depends on how much capital or how intensive your business is in terms of capital. Uh, but uh, it's always good. that uh, you raise when you don't need it uh, otherwise you will be wasting lot of your time and it's most likely that you may not be able to okay yeah. so there is a quote that an entrepreneur should always know about the finances of a startup so can you state why yeah. that's true <clears throat> oh that is a really wonderful question and uh, in my opinion i really struggled with it for longer period of time so let me reframe this question a little bit uh, uh, like you know instead of saying that finances because this is a very general term uh, we should understand it this, this way like you know what is the matrix uh, for uh, th- that defines your growth uh, for your business so every business might have some uh, different metrics like for example if you take the example of quora or twitter for longer period of time they did not have the revenue uh, all they had was the customer base so they were growing over it uh, you see the one of the great example coming from dunge uh, from our country dunge 
in case of danjo uh, like you know how they were like you know they were into loss for longer period of time i am like i'm not saying whether this is a good business or right business i'm not discussing that but i am trying to tell you that understanding or identifying that what is the key metric for your business that you should be focusing on uh, so finance is definitely a term that if you are not aware of uh, like you know your unit economics uh, that uh, then you will be end up uh, like you know losing lot of uh, burning lot of your cash and at the end of the day you will have no idea where the uh, like you know your uh, you have burnt all this money and uh, without capital you cannot sustain at the same time i say that uh, it's it is even more important to identify first what is the metrics of your growth growth what is the moat of your business like uh, every business has different thing uh, that uh, uh, you look after so identify first your uh, 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 key metric okay in my business these are the three things if i take care of everything else is taken uh, so let, let me give you an example have you ever played uh, that game called bowling bowling in sorry actually i'm getting some noise I, so i could not hear okay am i audible now yeah you are wonderful yeah okay. so well i haven't played it but i know about it okay so uh, if you see the bowling the game of bowling uh, you know there there, there are 5 uh, to 7 sticks or whatever uh, when you and and uh, you know when you want to play it or you win to generally your strategy is that you want to hit the skin spin right uh, the one uh, if you hit then all the others will uh, automatically die so the, in the same way the business works you identify okay these are the five things that i need to focus on the rest other things are distraction honestly and uh, as a human you have ultimately the limitation you cannot go after doing and micromanage each and every so just focus on those five things uh, so every business like you know if you see any balance sheet in finance uh, most of the time people will say okay what's your top line uh, what's your gross margin what is your ebitda these are the five six things uh, that you focus more on then you uh, also focus on what is your cash flow and net cash flow value uh, because uh, e- even if you are in profit if you do not have cash in the bank again you will uh, like uh, if you are run out if you run out of cash you have no more business so these are the few things that uh, like you know people take care of but in very early stage uh, you do not need somebody expert uh, i like in my opinion i don't think that you need a very very expert uh, who are the cfo but you definitely need uh, you should have that acumen uh, or if you do not have then you should learn it uh, and uh, then roll your business so you should be aware of your unit economy yeah What was your dream when you were a child? Like, what did you want when you were a child? Sorry, a dream when you were a child. Like when we are child, we say, "I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer." So, what was your dream? Hmm. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to be a scientist. <laughs> uh, I mean, I had all the plan, or means I mean, all the this notion that uh, I I will become a uh, I'll become a scientist at NASA. I wanted to be uh, into I wanted to be into physics, and obviously that time I had not much idea about physics because as a kid, generally physics is introduced in I guess tenth class or maybe eleventh or something like that. so before that i had no segregation of this is science or this is physics like that so but i definitely wanted to be into uh, be as a scientist and to contribute to society work for nasa and also things so yeah, that was my dream thank you so like i pretend you said that was my dream too But oh wonderful yeah uh, according to time like our dreams change now that's normal my dream i don't like physics at all 